Welcome to our second show of our new program, New Ideas. As mentioned in the previous show, new ideas may also mean non-traditional and or uncommon. The subject matter is not very well known to the public. As mentioned also in the last show, this program was initially planned to be in Arabic with the purpose of introducing non-mainstream, non and even dissenting ideas to Arabic-speaking audience. However, with some research, we found that there may be great interest within the non-Arabic speaking community in various issues related to the Arabic, Islamic, and or Middle Eastern culture in general. One difficulty we faced was that what may be far from new to a person with Middle Eastern background may be quite new to a non-Arabic person. Therefore, we will try to strike a compromise, hoping not to bore the audience and at the same time not to be too vague. Today's subject matter will deal with a perceived difference between Islam as a doctrine and a faith and Muslims as a reality and people. We will interview for this purpose Dr. Ahmad Subhi Mansour, a high-level Muslim clergy, but his problem is that interpretation of Islam is at loghead with the doctrine adopted by the establishment, the religious establishment, to the extent that he now lives in Springfield, Virginia, as an asylee far from his native country, Egypt. One last note is that this program is meant to be interactive, so please do not hesitate to send us your comments, questions, and any related ideas through our email address uideastudioa at gmail.com. And now I'll introduce you, Dr. Ahmad Subhi Mansour. Welcome, Dr. Mansour, and, uh, to the second show of, uh, of our New Ideas program here. Uh, in the last show, we talked about the various sects of Islam, and you said that there were the Sunni, the Shia, and the Sufis. Uh, more well known to the public here, the Sunni and the Shia, because of the events in Iraq and Iran and, and so on and so forth. And uh, I would like to devote this particular uh, show to a comment that you uh, have raised in, in, in the last time, where you said that there was a gap between the ideal and the reality of Muslims. In other words, you said that there was Muslims right now are not following exactly the pure faith of Islam was revealed to the Prophet of Islam, Muhammad. Uh, we will elaborate on that in four main points. We would like to know how is this gap in, in terms of the faith, uh, in terms of jurisprudence, which is called Sharia in Arabic, values, and the state. So we'll start with the gap in faith. Okay, uh, first of all, uh, I said uh, that there is a one religion uh, came through uh, all the prophets and all the message of God and this religion in faith said that there is no God but one God. But people in reality uh, idolize a uh, human beginning with idolizing the prophets themselves. And that is what happened in Christianity. Uh, they believe in Jesus as the son of God and the Christians, the initial Christian who converted to Islam, uh, they, uh, after some decades, they uh, revive the same aspect of idolizing uh, the Prophet, and they idolize Muhammad, and they give him the same aspect that the Christian uh, added to the Jesus Christ. What I wanted to say is, uh, most of Muslims, I'm talking about the Sunni, Shia, and Sufis, they idolize Muhammad the same way that the Christian idolize Jesus Christ, but in uh, different uh, titles. I give you one example. Uh, this is all known that uh, Christians believe that uh, Jesus is the Son of God. Muslims not say the same because most of the Quranic verse is against this particular expression. So they have to say something, the same meaning, but in another 
uh, expression. They, they believe that Muhammad is created from the light of God. Okay. So, so we, we are not here, of course, to talk about Christianity. It is in the Christian doctrine that reason of God. Mm. Their interpretation of that is, is certainly not our, our subject matter right yes, now. Yes, sir. But I, I would like to, to, to tell the public that basically Islam is against the doctrine of Islam or the faith is against uh, the prophet of Islam to be deified. So that's what uh, Dr. Mansour is trying to say. And he says that uh, the gap between ideal and reality here is represented by Muslims deifying it and perhaps also deifying certain Muslim saints, which he feels uh, or sees as against the pure faith. That, that yes, the, uh, this is exactly what I said. Uh, uh, all the, uh, Sunni, Shia, and Sufis, all of them together, idolize the Prophet Muhammad and making him the second God. And sometimes they make him over than or okay. super than, than, than God himself. This is what actually they are doing. They believe that Muhammad is still alive inside his tomb and he uh, review all the deeds of all the people. And this is the majority of Muslims? They yes, yes, still alive? yes, yes. Yes, yes. I'm a Muslim and I never heard that. Ah, uh, because you are a secular Muslim. <laughs> uh, when they go to to make uh, pilgrimage. Pilgrimage, yes. Yes. They have to go to Al Madinah to his tomb to give another page to his tomb. And they ask him to forgive them or to intercede for God to forgive them. They ask his intercession to go to paradise just because they go there and worship his tomb. This is, but isn't that because they, uh, they are taught that his spirit is all around and his spirit is alive and therefore he, he is in heavens? But uh, this, this is exactly belief and this is exactly what all the Quran is against. Okay. What is the Quran for in, in terms of this particular point? Tell, you know, Quran talks in many verses about uh, people in the, before the Quran and in the time of the Quran how they are the disbeliever, how they uh, uh, worship the tombs, the sacred tombs, they worship the alive saint, and they make them a middle mediator between them and mediators. God. Mediators. Mediators between them and God. Man and God. and uh, Allah says in the Quran, or the Quran said usually, this is uh, infidels. You, you should not do this because God is enough for you and God is one, and God has not begotten a son or uh, a wife, and there is no uh, God but one God, and this is what repeated in the Quran, more than 1,000 versions of the Quran. So we can conclude from that what you are saying is that in, in terms of pure faith, Islam as a pure faith is against deifying any, any personalities, that's number yes. one. Yes. Number two is against any mediation or a, a, a layer of clergy or religious specialists or whatever to stand in between the individual and God. Yes. For the relationship according to Islam in your, in your uh, is direct, view, is direct, is direct between, between God and the individual yes. with no interference. Yes. yes, and this is mentioned in many verses of the Quran. You go direct to God and ask him without anyone between you and, uh, and God. And another aspect of the contradiction between the faith of Islam and faith of Muslim that uh, there is only one scripture in, in, in Islam which is Quran. There is only one hadith or one saying that should be upheld. It is a hadith or the saying of Allah in Quran. Muslims have many sacred scriptures and they believe you in mean the, they have many Qurans? Or what? No, no. I'm talking about uh, another books uh, written by uh, 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 by a scholar mm -hmm. like Al-Bukhari for uh, Sunni oh, these Muslims. These are interpretations. 